Okay, this video is going to show you how to turn a tile map like this, and I'll, I'll use this one. It doesn't matter, I'll just use this one as an example. Um, I'll take a tile map like this and generate a proper living, breathing tile map in the game. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this in my game container, which currently doesn't do anything. Um, so I'm going to say new. Um, game map I'm going to call it uh, I'm going to give it a file name the file name I want to load is in the level data folder so I'm going to say level data this doesn't exist yet so it will be moaning at me uh, and I want to load map1.txt ok so I've got the, gray, the red squiggle because it doesn't know it exists so I'm going to right click on it and say generate class and you'll see that it's created gamemap.cs. Now, what I need to do is make sure I've got the libraries on there. Let's just get rid of some of these things. So, copy the libraries from one of the other ones, the ones that have got Engine 7 and the X and A framework libraries. Uh, then we're going to say public class game map, and this is going to be a tile map. Okay, but it's not going to be a standard time up. We're going to have our extra things happening. So we're then going to create the constructor game map. And it's going to accept a file name. Okay. So if we go back to our game container, it says new game bar and the squiggle's gone. What we must make sure we do because we want to test it and make sure it works we need to go to general logic and go to show title so again look for show title in the picker and it'll take you there so I've got this set up so if you haven't got this you need to go to the video create game container uh, and it'll take you through setting all this bit up so there's nothing else in show title because it's just in game container or the settings that I'm going to have so I've got this set up, so if I right click, go to definition, this is the quick way of finding a way around go to definition will take you to stuff, so if I want to know where the game map is right click, go to definition, takes me there okay, right so the first thing we need to do is say we need to load the map from a file, so if you start typing map, because I couldn't remember what it was called and there it is, set map from string file and we're going to use the file name we were given. Okay, so that loads this map. And it's actually built the tile map already. So it's turned all these characters into numbers to mean tile positions. The next thing we're going to do is we need to create our tiles. So we can say my tile list equals new tile, oh, capital T, bracket, bracket, square brackets that is. Then we open a brace. And this allows us to provide a list of tiles. Now, if we look at our map data, we have got 12 unique tiles. So we need to set up in game map 12 tiles. So we're going to use some place marker ones for now. So we're going to say new tile and we're going to say use a texture. But we're going to use a texture that's provided by the engine called rectangle 50 by 50. We don't want all of it because our map we said was tiles that are 32 by 32. So we're going to say only use top left hand corner, 32 across, 32 down. And so that the tiles look different, we're going to give them a color wash. So we're going to say color dot. Oh, I don't know for this. I'm going to use gray. Spell the American way. Now I'm going to put a comma because I'm making a list. So just like if you was writing a list of numbers, and just like you've got here a list of arguments, you put commas in between. So we write a comma. Then we need to provide the other 11 tiles. So I'm going to just use the same tile graphic painted different colours. So it doesn't matter if I put too many tiles in. I think I've got enough there. And I just need to select different tile colours. So if you delete the dot, so I'll double click that, delete the dot, put the dot back in, and you'll get a load of colours. 
generated. Um, let's have blue, yellow. These are just placeholders until we put the proper textures in. Tomato must be some sort of orangey red. Steel blue, tan. I like the idea of that. Cornflower blue, Microsoft blue. Um, dark cyan. That must be like a grey colour nearly. Crimson sounds groovy. Um, lime is arcade green. Uh, magenta, I got a bit of magenta. Um, don't know what that is. And let's have white. Okay, so that's the two steps that we need to do. The final step, add it to the tilemap manager. So gm.tilemap manager add this, this tilemap. Okay, so that should be enough. Let's just run it and see if it works. There you go, so my first tile was red, and you can see that that's generated that. Okay, so let's just go through the steps again. So all I've done in my game container, I've said new tile map. Now what I might do is I might store that so I can refer to it later on. So I'm going to say um, tile map, I don't know, let's call it game map. Um, current map and we're just going to create storage so I can now say on this line when you create that map store it as a reference called current map remember equals means store so we're saying generate the map store it here that all means I can then refer to the map later on which if we're going to do a mini map we'll need to do okay so as long as you've got your map text file created all you've got to do three steps get it loaded generate your tiles and then add the tile map to the tile map manager so that it can be moved and drawn okay and when we run it it's there Final thing we need to do, if we look at the resolution information on this debug stuff, it says 1280 by 720 and the world is 1280 by 720. Well, the world is bigger than that. So what we can do, we can say to the engine, well, make the world as big. So we can say world size and use the method world size. And then we can give it an area. So we can just write area which says the area of the tile map, but it's nicer sometimes to say this dot area, so we know explicitly we're talking about this tile map. When we run it again, and we look at that debug information, in fact we'll change this in a sec, we'll see that it says it's now 3200 wide by 864 high. So it's bigger than the screen. Okay, can't see all the map because I'm not scrolling it around, but this will scroll this map. Okay, I'll leave it there and I'll cover all the things in other videos.